What's going on, everybody? Here with Tom here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build Chicken Oil and Hazo, how to build his weapons, artifacts, talk about his talents, all that kind of stuff. And uh, real quick, before we get into the video, if you do enjoy these gaming guides and you're interested in these gaming guides or my other gameplays, make sure you subscribe so that you can catch up on my latest gaming content and my gameplays. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. So, starting off with Chicken Oil and Hazo's talents, first off, he is an Animo Catalyst user, so he is a bit similar to Star Mission aspect. Only instead of wind slashes, he uses like martial arts style punching and kicking. Pretty cool. He's honestly the coolest character and aspect of like move sets and everything. I think the martial arts style is really cool. So what the skill does is it's called Heart Stopper Strike. So what happens is you will have this little thing above your head. If it will show up, is it gonna show up? Maybe. Okay, there it is. So to the left of my head you see that there's a little arrow kind of thingy. So these will, if you hold it, they will go up and you will deal more damage the more stacks of declension you have, I think it's called, yeah, declension. And there is a passive talent that will help with this that I'll go over in a second. But basically you get more power the more you hold it and the more declension you have. And the last strike on the very last declension Conviction, conviction will be produced, excuse me, and it will be even stronger and have a larger AoEs, as you just saw. So definitely always try to get the, the four stacks of declension so you can get that last AoE strike. But you will get that most of the time anyway because of the passive talent I'll talk about in a sec. Wind Muster Kick is his burst it it's kind of similar to skarmouche again he does like a kick and then it will group enemies in and pull them in and basically just deal a bunch of damage and then after he's done with that kick it will explode so he'll do the kick he'll do damage he'll explode do more aoe animal damage and whatever the enemies are affected by it will affect that element to him so hydro pyro cryo electro whatever and it basically just just does a bunch of damage just like skarmouche's burst you know and honestly he is like he's like a four-star skarmouche in, in this aspect but he's a bit better than that he's really a great character as a four-star character honestly one of the best new four stars that have come out but that is his skill and burst and then for his first passive talents this is what i was talking about earlier every time a swirl reaction is activated on field he will gain one declension stack to heart stopper strike so instead of you having to like hold it i don't have it right now but instead of you having to hold it like this you'll basically always have the four declension as long as you're doing swirl reactions which is why it's best to have like a swirl reaction team but uh yeah you will get the declension stack and it'll happen every once every point one second so it's very useful and then for a second passive talent, whenever Heart Stopper Strike hits an opponent, it will increase all the party members' elemental mastery by 80 for 10 seconds. All of them except for Shikano and Hazo himself. So what this can be very good for is if you have somebody like, for example, I have Venti in my team who depends a lot on elemental mastery or Sucrose, Kazuha, anybody like that that's an off-field support kind of anima character like that. Or even like Dendro, I guess. But Dendro and Anima don't really go together. But you know what I'm saying. If you have another Anima support, this could be very good for them. And it does increase Hazo's Elemental Mastery. But it doesn't really need to because he doesn't need a ton. But I'll go over that later. Your third passive talent is not really anything special. Just decreases your sprinting stamina consumption for your own party members by 20%. And it's not stackable with other passive talents to do the same thing. So, yeah. That's it for our talents, and real quick, the first thing you want to prioritize when leveling up is definitely going to be the skill. That's where most of your damage is going to come from, and then do your burst. Or honestly, do your skill, and then do your attacks. Your normal attacks can do quite a bit of damage, and then your, do your burst. So that's what I would recommend for prioritizing your talents. So that's it for your talents. So real quick, I want to show off Shiknoi Hazo's talents a little bit. Well, not talents, but playstyle, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Mostly his declension stack. So, real quick, let me show you. So, he's a C. That sound means that I get declension stacks in an I4 now. So, does a bunch of AoE damage. I mean, that didn't. But you get what I mean. It does the AoE damage. It does quite a bit of damage. And then, as you can see, his normal attacks do quite a bit of damage, too. And so, that is a skill. 
very useful as you can see that's where most of your damage is going to come from and then his burst as you can see right there i kick and then there's an explosion that's pretty much mostly how you play him i mean he's pretty easy to learn and play kind of like skarmouche i don't mean to keep comparing the two but you know he's a, a very good character if you got him back when he was available and if he becomes available again i would definitely recommend getting him he's like a four-star Skarmouche, but like I said, he's more than that. He's like he's like a five-star stuck in a four-star's body. He's so good. He's he's just so good. But yeah, that's it for play style. All right, for weapons for Hazo, honestly, anything they have laying around will probably be good on him. His weapons aren't extremely important, but what I'm using on him is the Eye of Perception, and the only reason is because I'm using the Woodsith on Skarmouche, and obviously Skarmouche came out quite a bit after Hazo, and I was using the Woodsith on Hazo but i switched over to skarmouche because i didn't have any better weapons for skarmouche uh, a crit weapon is better for skarmouche than it is for like hazo and it all depends on your artifacts too but the wood sith is a good option if you have it if you have two of them i shouldn't have refined mine into two i should have just kept two separate wood siths but that's over with now but the wood sith is very good and eye perception is very good for the attack percent and it's passive and then if you don't have those two because I, I know both of those can... They're very rare. Well, not for me, I guess. The Eye Perception isn't. But if you don't have Eye Perception or the Wood Sith, you can use Sacrificial Fragments. That can also be good. But as I said earlier, Elemental Mastery is not really something you're going to need on him. He's not an off-field character like Venti or somebody like that, Sucrose, you know. So he's not going to need a whole ton of Elemental Mastery. But the little bit you get from Sacrificial Fragments can be nice. Most of what I would recommend is number one, Wood Sith, number two, I Perception, and number three, Sacrifice Fragments. And honestly, I forget the five star catalysts. I never remember them. I guess something like Scar and Moosh's five star catalyst would be good. But besides that, I don't really remember any. But I, I kind of wanted to recommend the four stars mainly because that's mainly what I have. So, yeah, that's it for weapons. So, for artifact sets, honestly, there's only going to be two sets that I recommend, mainly really one because both of the sets I'm going to recommend are honestly like the same thing. So the first one I'm going to say is Veritas Inventor, obviously. Every Animo person uses this set, almost. And then the second set is going to be the Desert Pavilion, which I have on Skarmouche because of the attack speed and everything. It's just better for Skarmouche, but honestly, either one is really good on Hazo. You know, you could get some benefit from the attack speed and everything in the normal and charged attack honestly that, that that could be a better one for hazo instead of the veritas inventor but if you're doing a lot of swirl damage and everything honestly the i think the veritas inventor is better but it it really depends on what crit stats you have if you have or, or like um sub stats or stats if you have better stats on pavilion go with pavilion if you have better stats on veritas inventor Go of Veritas Inventor. I think honestly that's what depends on. Both stats are really good. Just go with whatever stats or substats are better on which whichever one. But a third one that I, I wouldn't really recommend, but you can do, is you can do the Wondrous Troop. And that can be good as if you're using Catalyst or Bow. It can increase your charge attack damage by 35%. But you're not really going to be using that a whole lot. I mean, I do sometimes, but that's not where most of your damage is going to be coming from. As most of your damage is going to be coming from your skill and also your burst. And mainly your normal attacks are really just to get those declension stacks to get your skill and do more damage with your skill. So I wouldn't really recommend that a whole lot. Honestly, I would just, I would go for a Veritas and Venerer or a Desert Pavilion, but mostly I would go a Venerer, so... Yeah, that's it for the sets. So for stats and substats for your artifacts, you're going to look for elemental mastery in your substats, crit in your substats, anything like that. Energy recharge is okay, but a little bit of elemental mastery can be good for him. He doesn't need a whole ton. Like I said, he's an on-field and mostly elemental mastery is for off-fields. Look for crit and elemental mastery most of all. Energy recharge doesn't really matter. And then for your sands, you're going to want to go for attack percent. And then for your goblet, obviously animal damage bonus. And for your circlet, crit damage. Now, don't make the mistake I did because 
when I first built him, I was like, oh yeah, he's a he's an animal boy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bunch of elements of mastery on him. I did a little bit of damage with that, but don't treat him like any other animal character. Treat him like Scarmouche now, because I'm really late on making this, but treat him just like a DPS. Don't treat him, you know, like Elemental Mastery. Now, if you want to, you can tr treat him like I treated my Nahida. You can give him Elemental Mastery on the Sands and then build him like a DPS on every other aspect. So, like, look for crit substats in your flower and your feather and then animal damage bonus on your goblet and crit on your circlet. But honestly, you're going to get more damage with attack percent. So, but I mean, whatever you get better, if you have a better piece that is elemental mastery instead of attack percent on your sands, then you can go for that. But yeah, generally I would say go for attack percent sands over anything and then animal damage on goblet and crit on the circlet. So for team comps, honestly, you're going to want to go with a swirl team. So this is the team that I have. It's Hazo, Venti, Bennett, and Zhongling. It's a pretty good all-around team. Venti with Elemental Mastery, he can benefit with the second pass of talent, I believe, of Hazo. When he uses his Heart Stopper Strike, you get increased Elemental Mastery by 80, I believe, for 10 seconds. So Venti can really benefit from that, or somebody like Sucrose can also benefit. And, you know, you'll have these two. They'll be like batteries for each other. Uh, Hazo will be a battery for Venti, generating a bunch of animal particles. Obviously, since he's a catalyst, he can generate a lot more than most other animal characters. And then the other two, obviously, are my Pyros, which are for Swirl. They're great supports for Swirl. Honestly, these two are very good in teams like this. This is, like, exactly the team I have for Skarmouche, only except for Venti. I have Farz on here, and obviously, I have... Skarmouche instead of Hazo, but yeah, Swirl Team is definitely going to be the best you want to go for. So, anything with Pyro, anything doing Swirl, just a Swirl Team is the best. Because when your first passive talent is in effect, it's very good to have those Swirl Teams, Pyro characters to help with your Swirl Teams. So you can get those declension stacks faster, so you don't have to hold the skill, and you can just get it from doing reactions of Swirl, so... Yeah, 100% a Swirl team similar to this. Any Anything like this, a good support is Jungling, like I said. Her Pyronado is very good to get those, just like it is with Skarmouche. Bennett, of course, too. Anything like that is very good with Hazo. So yeah, pretty straightforward with Hazo, how to build his teams. Like I said, I would just base it around Pyro characters for the simplest, you know, Swirl reactions, just like this. Bennett and Jungling are definitely the best supports to pair with them. And then Venti can swirl all those elements as well. But, you know, swirl for Hazo mostly is very good so you can get his declension stack. So yeah, that's it for our team comps. All right, so for the last part of this video, I'm going to be going into Spiral Bists on 410 like always and show you what Hazo can do. Now in the future, I will begin to do like 411 and 412 as I get my characters better and everything. And I might redo maybe not all of my guides, but some of them, you know, in the future when they're relevant with my characters being level 90, talents being all leveled up and all that stuff. And I might do 4, 11, and 12. But for right now, I'm going to be doing level 70 characters, level 70 weapons, and 410, stuff like that. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into the Spiral Abyss for the showcase. You can get away. Hey, yeah. Nice and spicy. Keep moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It hurts. Get out of here. Adventure. Booba, get them. Brace yourselves. Bring it on. Teamwork is dreamwork. Eat this. Yeah. It hurts. Time for takeoff. Yahoo! Come back. 
Bring it on! We gotta... That's close enough! Let me try. I'm the frying pan! It's... Everybody stand back! Let's play! Think you can get away? Get out of here! Okay, so that's it for the showcase, and that's it for this video. I do apologize, some of the parts on the showcase were kind of rough. Like, even I was like, I was like, wow, I didn't think I was going to have it that rough. I guess I've never tried Hazo's team in Spiral Abyss before, but whatever, you know. Obviously, he's not a 5-star. He's not as good as Skarmouche. I know I said he's like a 5-star, a stuck in a 4-star body, but now that I've played him more, I, I do believe he is right where he belongs that uh, being a four star not that he's horrible by any means but stand back. you know he's he's still very good for a four star but in between you know trying to get him or skarmouche obviously they're different one is a five star one is a four star and one's hard to get but i would definitely try to get skarmouche because he's just better you know he has more maneuverability being able to go up in the air and dodge attacks and stuff you know and he does a lot more damage, and you can utilize his burst damage, or not his burst damage, but his charge attack damage a lot more than his, than Hazo's. And, I don't know, I feel like Skarmish's kit is just a whole lot better, but Hazo is still a very good character. You know, if you see Hazo in a banner coming up, and Skarmish is not in a banner, <laughs> I would, you know, I would say try him out, see what you think of him, but... I do hope I was able to help everybody build Shikano and Hazo a bit better. And if this video did help you, make sure you leave a like and you subscribe so you can catch up with my latest gaming content. And I will see everybody in the next video. Bye.